professional angling tutor, Miles Gascoigne, spends much of his life teaching others how to catch carp, and as such, is the perfect man to talk about feature finding. It's a subject neglected by so many anglers, but one that is so important, and will have a direct impact on what you catch at virtually every venue. Finding the right place to cast your hook baits is obviously vital to your success. I think the importance of using a marker float is to give you an idea of what you've got in front of you or in your swim, um, giving you an idea of depth, uh, which will give you, uh, which will help in choosing location. Feature finding is going to is going to give you an idea of depth. Also, um, will help you understand what the lake bed is made up of. Is it is it weed? Is it thick weed? Is it just a little bit of weed? Um, is it gravelly? Is it silty? Is it clay? What is it? The main line that I use on the reel is braid and it's almost pointless feature finding or marking as whatever you like to call it without braid. Um, I use 30 pound braid. Um, I then put a shock leader on it. Um, either this 30 pound, which I think probably does the job well enough, armor cord, it's very, very abrasion resistant, comes in a nice tidy little spool, um, and I join it onto the braided line with a back-to-back -back grinner knot. Um, I don't think it matters how far you're casting. A finger stool, something like this, you can buy it from a chemist shop, um, I think they're 199 something like that. They're good bits of kit, they do wear out, um, but I find the thinner ones protect your finger enough, but they give you some sensitivity because you need to feel that line and the pressure on it as you make your cast. I use a gripper lead. It's got some nice little lumps and bumps on it, but it also has quite a big surface area. So if you imagine my hand is the lake bed, there's a, there's a lot of lead touching the bottom and that's going to transmit as much information up your braided main line as possible. The little lumps and bumps will catch in the gravel. Some leads on the market have some huge great big protrusions and I find they catch on bits of gravel and you'll pull hard to get them off and the lead just jumps two or three foot, completely missing half the features that you're trying to find. So I find these grippers work really well. If there's clay on the bottom you also find that clay often holds up inside that hole in the middle which uh, you know can give you another indication of what's on the bottom. There's a uh, bit of silicon tube covering over a couple of snap links in there, um, just helps to prevent tangles a little bit. And then we've got a nice, nice big ring there um, to allow free movement of line um, through it. The float's a really nice buoyant float. Um, it's a nice design by Corder. You can very quickly unscrew the top and change it for an orange or a black flight. You, know, you, you look at it and there's that sort of shimmer of little ripples and you'll find that this yellow colour is actually rubbish and you'll want a black colour. It really does stand out. Um, other conditions and orange, some, sometimes this yellow colour works well. Today I've got the reflection of the trees on the far margin in the swim in front of me so it's quite dark and therefore this yellow colour is going to stand out the best. One, one thing that's really important is as you cast out your setup will look like this roughly as it's flying through the air. If you just let that just splash down on the surface, what you'll find is that the float will wrap around here a couple of times, tangle, and it will hit the bottom and you'll be able to drag it back to establish what's on the bottom. Then you'll want to see where that is and establish the depth. And of course the float won't come up because it's tangled. So the answer to that is, and this really is to me the only answer, is to feather your cast. And by that I mean when you're casting, just before it lands, using your finger, just gently touch the edge of the spool. It slows down the progression of the lead at, as it's in flight, so the lead will slow down, the float will come up to here, and you'll want to do all this just before it lands, and then as it hits the surface, the lead is tight against this ring, and there's no way that it's going to wrap up around your main line. So it hits the bottom, you can feel what's on the bottom, and then we can allow the float to come up to establish depth. That actually flies, and I'm feathering it down to make sure that we don't get a tangle. Keep your finger tight against the edge of the spool, trapping the line, and then watch the rod tip. You'll have a slight bend in the rod tip as the lead is uh, putting some weight on the tip. And then when it, it hits the bottom, um, if you've got weed, the rod or tip will just gently come back up to straight. If you have a harder bottom, silt or even gravel, then the rod will come up with a sharper jolt, and it gives you a rough idea of what's on the bottom. I take my finger and hold the line and then hold it against the blank. The blank is a little bit like a drum, it just um, amplifies all the vibrations being carbon and hollow and then the braid having absolutely no stretch in it as well helps you give, gives you a better idea of what's on the bottom. 
Then as a visual aid, you can watch the rod tip. And as the rod tip's coming back, I'm watching to see whether it's just got a smooth bend in it, which it has at the moment, and I'm feeling a sort of soft, silty clay bottom. And then I'm going to see whether it locks up at all, which might indicate some weed, or whether there's some sort of vibrations, more sudden vibrations as if there's some gravel or rock. So keeping my finger against the blank is going to give me the best idea of what's down there. I'm keeping the rod low as well. I see quite a few guys doing it like this up in the air and I feel that it just pulls the lead up off the bottom too much. Keeping the rod low I think it's going to keep the lead set up along the bottom and uh, give you the optimum indication of what's there. Now I'm just feeling a few lumps and bumps as if they're sort of rocks and gravel. So what we're going to do is see what kind of depth we've got there and also give us an indication of where that is out in the lake, a, a more of a visual indication. So the way to do that, half a turn on this reel, if you're using a bait runner you might engage the bait runner, then take hold of the line and pull it up to the one foot marker. Now your float should be one foot off the bottom. Two foot, seven, eight, Okay, so the floats just popped up at eight foot. What's really important is that you keep the rod in the same place. As you can imagine, if I move the rod more towards the float or further away, that's going to alter the amount of line that the float's coming up and down. So once you've found that feature that you want to establish the depth at, make sure you keep the rod pointing in the same position and pull the line out until the float reaches the surface. Okay, so I've found my spot. It's right at the bottom of the far margin shelf. Uh, it drops down from sort of four foot down to 10 foot and nice and silty at the bottom. So I've popped up the marker float, got the right depth, found the right spot. I've put my fishing rod to it and now I'm just gonna put a little bit of bait around it. We're gonna go out with a throwing stick and uh, wish me luck.